So let's bring in Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, who is live from Normandy, France, which we're going to get to why you're there, Governor. Thanks so much for joining us. We just, listen to that, you hear the birds chirping? Yeah. Uh, and, and a stoic backdrop right it is, there. It's, it, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for, for letting me join you. And, and it is extraordinary to be here where you come face to face with the undeniable truth that freedom isn't free. And the liberties that we enjoy every day and so often take for granted, we're one. We're one in battle by men and women who gave their lives. And to be here at Normandy and at the uh, Normandy American Cemetery uh, is such an important reminder for all of us that, in fact, men and women have given their lives for our freedom, and we should honor them and thank our veterans every single day. Amen. Amen uh, to that. What a, it's on my bucket list to go Mine see is, that. I'm just getting ready to say a bucket list uh, place For to go. sure. So we're, we're glad to have you. And, you know, those crosses behind you lead uh, tragically into our next segment. Uh, you're, you're familiar with what, Governor, with what happened to Dodger Stadium protests outside because the Dodgers honored the Catholic, the, the trans group Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, known for defacing crosses. What the, your reaction to how the Dodgers have handled this Major League Baseball and the fan response? Yeah, I, I'm stunned by this this whole incident. That in fact, an anti-Catholic hate group uh, would be would be invited and showcased uh, at a Dodgers baseball game. When in fact, you know, our our the First Amendment to our Constitution enshrines religious freedom. And as a Virginian, where Thomas Jefferson, in fact, wrote the first statutes to protect religious freedom in Virginia, I can't help but but be shocked by the fact that this has even happened. Every day in Virginia, we go to work. We're pr we're protecting Virginians' right to express their religious beliefs and liberties. We're protecting uh, our Jewish population from from anti-Semitism. And to be honest, it's all caught up in this great push to move parents out of their children's lives. And, yeah. and we've been ground zero for the parents' rights movement where we have to protect the right of parents to make decisions for their children and express their religious beliefs every single day. You know, Governor, you're right. This is a push from the left to um, basically break down morals and values and the centrality of the family in American life. There's no question about that. But the push is coming from businesses, from ESG. And when I've looked into it, uh, it appears to be coming even from the WEF, the World Economic Forum, and then all of these, uh, you know, investment firms like BlackRock and Vanguard. So what would, what can we do? What can you do um, as a governor? And what should we as citizens do to put an end to this ESG, which is clearly not reflecting the values of most Americans? Let me let me just start with the fact that behind uh, environmental and social and good governance policies were laudable. They went way off the rails and have become a, become almost a, their, their own political philosophy. And uh, we've got to step back and recognize that it's the values that we hold dear across this nation that that I I am seeing uh, straight. Uh, up close and personal learning the values that we should be celebrating. And of course, what we're seeing is that companies that step way out on these fronts um, are immediately recognized and customers are pushing back. You know, just go ask Bud Light and Target. Uh, we know that this has gone so far off the rails and it's time for companies to get things back in bounds. Yeah, like caring about their shareholders instead of ESG. I just kind of disagree with you that ESG should even be part of the equation. But I'm sorry, Will, go ahead. No, it's fine. Uh, we want to get you in on this, Governor. Well, uh, you know, but, go ahead. But, but, one of, but one of the top, one of the topics there is, remember the beginnings. The beginnings here were that, in fact, we could invest in, in processes that, that were saving, saving energy and using less water. That, that, that saves money for shareholders. And that we were going to have good governance where, in fact, there's transparency at the board level about what companies are doing. Those were the original ideals that were behind the original ESG efforts. They've gone so far off the rails. And that's why my point around getting back into the zone of common sense where we remember who we work for, uh, that's so critical. Uh, Governor, we wanted to get you in on this as well. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris flew across the country. She flew to Denver in order to deliver a speech on climate change. Um, she talked about young people. It's a debate we had a little bit earlier about whether or not there's truly such a thing as climate anxiety. She talked about young people suffering from climate anxiety. 
Watch this. No, I'm sorry, we don't have what she had to say. You have to take my word for it that that's what she, she dis <laughs> discussed. Um, we know you've addressed uh, in the New York Post, you have an op-ed that says Virginia has a better idea than Biden's dangerous energy plan. What is that idea? Well, well the, the fact that she gave this speech is not a surprise at all because, in, in, in fact, what we're seeing out of the Biden administration is this reckless pursuit of green agenda at the expense of, again, common sense. And, and in fact, dismantling all of our secure power generation and, and, and trying to impose uh, dismantling guidelines that can't be upheld by technology in a time frame that makes any sense whatsoever. And, and as a newly elected governor in 2021 in Virginia that had been, in fact, uh, governed by Democrats who did the exact same thing to Virginia, we moved quickly and in fact found out that what they had proposed was was not only was not only wrong, it was undoable and it was driving up power prices and it was going to put in jeopardy power reliability in Virginia. So we launched the all American, all of the above power plan and energy plan in order to embrace the fact that we have a a much cleaner power generating stack today that's traditional and nuclear that yes it can include wind and solar but this reckless pursuit of green power at any cost is only going to hurt Virginians and Americans and that's why our plan embraces next generation technologies like small modular react reactors in the nuclear field carbon capture hydro hydrogen and yes advanced uh, advanced uh, battery storage but the idea that we're going to start dismantling our power stack is really misguided and reckless. And in fact, what we're seeing is from all of the major, major uh, power regions, and, and the PJM is the one that Virginia is, is in, they have already expressed serious concerns about dismantling so much faster than we are creating. And, and I, I have a state that we're growing. We weren't growing before I got here, but we are growing. And as a result, we need more dependable and affordable power. And therefore, we're going we're gonna to need to build new generation that's going to include natural gas and all other forms. Governor uh, the Biden administration continues to demonstrate they have no idea how to plan. And they're just embracing a political philosophy that seems to really cater to the far left. Governor, you're talking about some big national issues here. You're in the middle of a couple of tight timelines. First of all, you were elected... Uh, in 2011. It's a one-term governorship in Virginia, but also the clock is tipping, ticking on the Republican primary as well. Your name has been floated. There was a billionaire on our network recently who said you'd be the ideal candidate in his mind in 2024. Uh, based on those timelines, are, are you still considering whether you would run for president? Well, I have, I have been continually humbled by the fact that uh, someone is, as new to this as I am uh, is having his name tossed around and included in this discussion. Uh, you know, 40 years ago, I was washing trash and take, or taking out trash and washing dishes at a diner in Virginia Beach. And, and what I'm finding, of course, is, is that this discussion, I believe, is, is really reflective of the great progress that we're making in Virginia. You know, as I said, this was a state that was led by Democrats on all fronts, and the state was really heading so much in the wrong direction. And in 17 short months, we have fundamentally redirected things with strong economic growth and standing up for law enforcement and making sure that we're empowering parents and reestablishing excellence in education. And so our focus is on our elections this year. We've got our midterms and uh, we're off cycle. And so I've got 100 House seats and 40 Senate seats that are up this year. I want to hold our House. I want to flip our Senate, our Senate. And I believe Virginians will do that because they recognize that we're headed in such a good direction. We had literally uh, extraordinary job numbers yesterday with a 10 year high in labor participation. We have Virginians back to work. We're seeing uh, another four four billion dollar surplus this year uh, because we have more Virginians working. We can cut taxes again. And I think that's what people's excitement is about what's going on in Virginia. And I look forward to continue to deliver it. Are you considering a run, though? As I said, as I said, I am totally focused on Virginia. And most importantly, we have got to demonstrate, I think, not only to Virginians, but to the nation that a state that was truly blue can stand up 
elect Republican leaders and then introduce common sense conservative policies and they work. And then we can come back at our midterms and voters who might not even voted for us in 2021 are saying, we like what you're doing. I think this is such an important statement. And so November, November 7th is hugely important to Virginians to express their view that they like common sense conservative policies led by Republicans. You mentioned earlier about the role of the family, um, the role of parents in a child's life. Um, I don't think it's disconnected from this next question, which is that the American Federation of Teachers in, has endorsed, no surprise, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for, for in 2024 in the Democratic primary. Um, the American Federation of Teachers seems to be something that is looking to step in between on many occasions, the parent and the child. What do you make of this endor endorsement? Well, I don't think you need to limit it on many equations, occasions. You can just say on all occasions. I mean, at the end of the day, the teachers unions believe that they know better than families. They know better than parents. And they want bureaucrats and politicians to dictate what's best for our children as opposed to parents. Listen, so clearly, the best thing that happened to us during 2021 was the with consistent reminder from the teachers unions that they believe that parents don't have a role, they don't have a seat at the table. And here they go again. And is, it, there's no surprise, none, that they're gonna endorse Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And I think that is good for Republicans because this is not a Republican versus a Democrat issue. This is a Virginia issue. This is an American issue. Parents have to have not just a seat at the table, but the head seat at the table, and all decisions must go through parents with regards to their children. Amen to that. Absolutely. Let's let's get to why you're there, uh, Governor. You're in France to honor uh, the fallen at the World War II Cemetery in Normandy and attend the International Paris Air Show as well. What's it for those of us that haven't been there? What's it like to be on those hallowed grounds? First of all, it, it takes your breath away the minute that you arrive because there is such a solemn sense of sacrifice and selflessness where you're reminded, as I said, of, of, of the undeniable truth that people die in order to protect our freedom. I'm also inspired by the fact that there are so many people here, tens of thousands of people come here every single day in order to remember and to honor and to celebrate the values that underpin the most extraordinary nation that's ever been the United States. And, and I think that we all should come here. I think we should all recognize this. You know, we recently, we recently overhauled our history standards in Virginia as part of our efforts in order to make sure that we, we're reestablishing excellence. And as part of that, we are reteaching the foundational principles of our Constitution and our Bill of Rights and our Declaration of Independence. We are reteaching the, the, the history, the good and the bad of Virginia and America. And as part of that, we have to understand that there was a moment, there was a moment where Europe was controlled by evil, overtaken by the Nazis. And when that, when, when that call came, Americans and all of our allies answered the call and came and liberated Europe. And I have to say, as, as the governor of Virginia, I am so humbled by the many, many Virginians that are buried here. The Bedford boys, uh, 30 men from Bedford, Virginia, who sacrificed everything. 19 died on D-Day right here. And uh, it's just an extraordinary reminder again that freedom is not free. Yeah, you know, Governor, not, not everyone can make it to Normandy, but I overheard my husband when he was sitting on the couch telling the story to my kids um, over Memorial Day. And it was one of, it's just such a beautiful moment. And I could see them just in awe um, of, of that story. Speaking of fathers, it is Father's Day tomorrow. You are the father of four kids. I want to wish you a happy Father's Day. And really quick, you. if you have a quick message about Father's Day. My first message is to my amazing wife, Suzanne, and, and, and our four kids. Thank you. Thank you for blessing me with the extraordinary honor of being a dad. Uh, it is such a privilege. And I, I want to speak to all fathers. Um, we so value and need you in your children's lives. And it's such a privilege and a blessing to be a father. 
and let's celebrate fathers and let's also remind ourselves that we must be engaged. We must be engaged in our kids' lives because God, in fact, blessed us with them and we want to answer his call as well. Well, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, thank you so much for joining us from Normandy this morning on Fox and Friends. Thank you, Governor. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.